constitution of India lies at the foundation of the world's largest democracy. Hello everyone, hope you all are doing great. Hey, and try guessing what day it is today. You guessed it right, it's the constitution day. We the students of St. Joseph School CBSC are privileged to celebrate the Samvidan Divas or the constitutional day. It is celebrated on the 26th of November every year to commemorate the adoption of the constitution of India. Constitutional Day also aims to bring awareness on the importance of the Indian Constitution and its architect, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Prayers go up and blessings come down, and may these blessings make our country march much more gracefully in the path of our bright future. The Constitution was never meant to prevent people from praying. Its declared purpose was to protect their freedom to pray. Let us join our hands for the prayer. God, we are gathered here to celebrate the conjoining of the sacred with the secular. We recognize our nation's promise that all shall be treated equally as a manifestation of your eternal promise that we all are created as equals in your image. On this Constitution Day, we are ever mindful that it is your loving hand that guided us. God, we thank you for those who came before us and who enshrined our freedom and our rights in the Constitution. We thank you for those who have defended those rights and who expanded them. We remember that those rights to survive, we too must be ever vigilant. We too must be prepared to act in their defense. God, give us the right to understand our given integrity to defend them always. We pray that we might be your history makers that for future generations our lives might sing a song, tell a story of a kingdom in the making where the poor, the weak, the marginalized are honored, where people build bridges instead of walls, where communities are founded on human rights and love. Calm your minds, make your hearts feel at peace as the positive bliss of the prayer song ripples over the dark spell cast over by the ongoing pandemic. Yeah.
constitutional morality is not a natural sentiment. It has to be cultivated. The preamble is an introduction to the actual constitution and it holds the dreams and the visions of the members of the constituent assembly. It mainly tells us the values on which the constitution is based on. The people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief and faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all, fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our constituent assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt, enact and give ourselves this constitution. Our constitution is one of the finest constitutions to be ever written as it has taken into consideration almost all aspects. It has 12 bulky volumes, over 2000 amendments. Also, it is the constitution that took the longest time to be made, 3 years, 114 days to be precise. The early years of childhood are the time to prepare the soil. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was the 14th and last child of Ramji Maloji Sakpal. He was born on 14th April 1891. As a young adult, he studied and later on became a jurist. In his youth, he campaigned for the rights and equality of Dalits, making him an important political figure. He is now also popularly known as the father of the Indian constitution. is not a mere lawyer's document. It is a vehicle of life and its spirit is always the spirit of age. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The National Constitution, also known as the Samvidhan Divas, is celebrated every year on the 26th of November to celebrate the adoption of the Indian Constitution. It was first celebrated in the year 2015 by the brainchild of Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji to spread awareness about the significance of the Indian Constitution. Since it was such a great achievement that a huge milestone had been reached on the 125th birth anniversary of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar on the 19th of November 2015, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared the 26th of November as the Constitution Day of India, since Dr. B. R. Ambedkar had played a significant role in its existence. The Constituent Assembly was formed to write the draft of the Constitution of India. The first president of the Constituent Assembly who was selected was Dr. Sachidananda Sinha and Dr. B.R. Ambedkar was selected as the chairman. On the 26th of November 1950, the Constitution of India was the law that was to be abided by all Indians. The Constitution of India declared India as a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. It declared justice for every Indian, liberty of thought and expression, equality and fraternity. This day, we Indians preserve the values and preserve the rich heritage of India and spread the importance of the Indian constitution through the thoughts, values and ideas of our great leader, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. The Indian constitution is the supreme law of India. It is the longest and the largest written constitution in the world. The Constitution is a set of rules which regulates the functioning of the administration of our country. In conclusion, I would like to say that the celebration of the Constitution of India is essential since we become aware of what values our predecessors wanted still in us. We must understand and stand by every word it says and it provides a guideline as to how Indians should up uphold themselves. I solemnly hope to become the Indian who made their country proud. Jai Hind! Our India celebrates the 
Constitution Day on 26th November. The purpose of Constitution Day is to ensure that students in our country have increased knowledge and appreciation of this valuable and important document of freedom. Ambedkar have said, Constitution is not a mere lawyer's document. It is a vehicle of life and its spirit is always the spirit of age. Thus, he is called the father of Indian constitution. The assembly held its first meeting on December 9, 1946 and elected Dr. Sachit Anand Sinha, the oldest member of the assembly, as the professional president on December 11, 1946, the assembly elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as its permanent chairman. This is Women of the Drafting Committee of the Indian Constitution. Original copies of the constitution were written in Hindi and English. The English version had 1,17,369 words. We need to be proud that India had 22 parts, 395 articles and 12 schedules in the constitution and thus it is the longest constitution in the world. The constitution wasn't typed or printed. It was handwritten by Prem Bihari Nair in a flowing italical style. The original copies are stored in helium filled cases in the Indian parliament. There were 2,000 amendments were made when Constitution Day, the first draft was put up for debate. India adopted its constitution that came into force on January 26, 1950. ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity come from the French constitution. The five-year plans were adopted from the USSR. The laws governing the Supreme Court were taken from Japan. Suspension of fundamental rights came from the Weimar constitution of Germany. Preamble was inspired by the U.S. Constitution's preamble. The Constitution's basic structure stands on the Government of India Act 1935. It amended only 94 times in over 60 years. A Constitution has stood the test of time. Let us remember the man who showed us the path of equality and who led us to the destination of brotherhood. May the idea of Baba Sahib forever inspire us. Hmm, do you guys know what the Constituent Assembly is? 
As the saying goes, more heads are better than one. The Constituent Assembly was a group of elected representatives who came together from different regions, backgrounds, religions, and drafted the Indian Constitution. And this Constituent Assembly was chaired by none other than Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. To lead our lives to our fullest potential, we need to enhance our ideals about the constitutional rights. A very special person, Ms. Ashwini M. Hathiholi, serving as the 21st additional senior civil judge, Court of Small Cases, Bengaluru, is here to enlighten us on the detailed legal document of the constitution. She was born and completed her entire education in the fields of BCom and LLB at Belagavi. बस ये बात हवाओं को बधाए रखना रोशनी होगी चिरागों को जलाए रखना लहू देकर जिसकी हिफाजत की शहीदों ने उस तिरंगे को सदा अपने दिल में बसाए रखना अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल वर्चुअली प्रेजेंट एट द आउटसेट आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक फादर रोहन अलमेडा फॉर हैविंग गिवन मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्पीक ऑन द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन डे Being born as an Indian is a blessing, and the Constitution Day is one such occasion to celebrate this blessing. The Constitution Day, also known as Samvidhan Divas or National Law Day, is celebrated on November twenty-six every year. On November twenty-six, nineteen forty-nine, the Constituent Assembly of India formally adopted. the indian constitution however our constitution came into force on january 26 1950 which is celebrated as republic day constitution day aims to bring awareness about the indian constitution and also to promote the constitutional values amongst the citizens of india in 1947 the people of india had just one freedom from the british colonial operation by successfully launching an innovative freedom struggle that was largely non-violent yes we had become free but where would we go from here what next after getting independence at that time our society was marked by deep social hierarchies persistent inequalities and grinding poverty The task at hand for India was to create a modern political state. The principal catalyst was the constitution that would enable us in making a transition from a beautiful civilization to a modern democratic country called India. The constitution of India empowers its people as much as the people of India empower the constitution. In fact, the preamble, which is the heart of the Indian Constitution, begins with the words "We the people of India." It says, "We the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic, and to secure to all its citizens justice, equality, liberty, and fraternity," in our Constituent Assembly. on this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt and act and give to ourselves this constitution so it is the people of india who are the strength inspiration and goal of the constitution to put it in simple words constitution is the basic law of the land it is also known as the mother of all laws because based on the constitution the other indian laws have evolved our constitution has many unique features it is the longest written constitution in the whole world it contains provisions not only relating to the union of india but also incorporates the provisions relating to the states basically our constitution can be divided into three parts they are fundamental rights directive principles of state policy and fundamental duties the articles dealing with fundamental rights guarantee to the citizens certain inalienable rights which are enforceable in a court of law 
the directive principles of state policy provide important guidelines for formation of state policies the fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy are addressed to the state whereas the fundamental duties which were inserted in our constitution by way of an amendment in the year 1976 through article 51 capital a are addressed to the citizens these duties though not enforceable but they reflect certain basic values they highlight the values like nationalism patriotism humanism discipline scientific temper harmonious living and collective excellence the constitution is not just a mere set of fundamental laws that form the basis of governance of our country but it also embodies certain basic objectives that were very dear to our founding fathers these objectives do not only find expression in various provisions and articles of the indian constitution but they are also predominantly enshrined in the preamble to our constitution it is very essential for us to look into these expressions that are enshrined in the preamble so that we can have a better understanding of our constitution sovereignty by declaring us as a sovereign entity the preamble emphasizes on complete political freedom it means that we are internally powerful and externally free socialism the constitution directs the state to ensure a planned and coordinated social advance in all fields to ensure a basic minimum to all is the crux of all the public policies secularism india is a home to almost all the major religions in the world secularism in indian context means that our country is not guided by any religion or religious considerations democracy democracy means government of the people by the people and for the people in a democratic setup the people of india elect their leaders and in turn these leaders remain accountable to the people republic as opposed to monarchy our constitution prefers to remain a republic it means that the office of the head of the state is elective political equality is its chief message justice justice is a total value our constitution abolishes untouchability prohibits exploitation of women children and weaker section of the society and it provides for reservation to raise the standard of people who have been oppressed for ages liberty the blessings of freedom have been secured and assured to each and every citizen of india through a set of fundamental rights that are enforceable in a court of law now equality every citizen of india is entitled for equal protection of law and equality before law fraternity fraternity stands for the spirit of common brotherhood without this a plural country like india would stand divided to conclude i would like to quote what granville austin said he appropriately said that constitutions do not work they are inert and are dependent on being worked by citizens and the elected representatives so so on this constitution day let us all take a pledge that we shall perform the fundamental duties in their true letter and spirit let us also take a pledge that we shall all strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that we can take our nation to its greatest heights jai karnatak jai hind
walk with wise men and become wise for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul we the people of india celebrate today the constitution day a day on which we the people of india declared ourselves a sovereign socialist secular and democratic republic and pledged ourselves to secure justice liberty equality to all of us as citizen of this great nation constitution day also known as samvidhan divas is celebrated in india on 26 november every year to commemorate the adoption of the constitution of india key words in the preamble preamble a word taken from latin means the introduction and in this introduction we realize that we the people of india are sovereign the term means that india has its own independent authority and it is not a dominion of any other external power in the country the legislature has the power to make laws which are subject to certain limitations secondly socialist the term means the achievement of socialist ends through democratic means it holds faith in a mixed economy where both private and public sectors coexist side by side thirdly secular means that all the religions in india get equal respect protection and support from the state fourthly democratic the term implies that the constitution of india has an established form of constitution which gets its authority from the will of the people expressed in an election fifthly republic the term indicates that the head of the state is elected by the people in india the president of india is elected head of the state the main objective of the indian constitution is to promote harmony throughout the nation the factors which help in achieving this objective are justice it is necessary to maintain order in society that is promised through various provisions of fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy provided by the constitution of india it comprises three elements which is social economic and political secondly equality the term equality means no section of society has any special privileges and all the people have given equal opportunities for everything without any discrimination everyone is equal before the law thirdly the liberty the term liberty means freedom for the people to choose their own way of life have political views and behavior in society liberty does not mean freedom to do anything a person can do anything but in the limit set by the law thirdly fraternity the term fraternity means a feeling of brotherhood and sisterhood and an emotional attachment with the country and all the people fraternity helps to promote dignity and unity in the nation importance of these objectives these objectives provides a way of life it includes fraternity liberty and equality as the notion of a happy life and which cannot be taken from each other liberty cannot be divorced from equality equality cannot be divorced from liberty nor can liberty and equality be divorced from fraternity without equality liberty would produce the supremacy of the few over the many equality without liberty would kill individual initiative without fraternity liberty would produce the supremacy of the few over the many without fraternity liberty and equality would not become a natural course of things we the people of india let us realize this preamble of our wonderful nation in our day to day life gratitude is one of the most exquisite form of courtesy and the roots of all goodness lie in the soil of appreciation gratitude
gratitude can transform common days into thanksgivings, turn routine jobs into joy, and change ordinary opportunities into blessings. William Arthur Respected Father Principal, Chief Guests, Teachers, and My Dear Josephites, I deem it a privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the management, staff, and students of St. Joseph's School. First and foremost, I thank the Almighty for this beautiful day and for the countless blessings He has showered upon us. I would like to acknowledge our gratitude to our beloved principal, Rev. Father Rohan D. Almeida, who is dynamic and supportive in all our endeavors. It is a privilege indeed to extend our heartfelt thanks. Thank you, dear Father. This virtual celebration would not be a success without the speaker of the day, Ms. Ashwini M. Atihoyu, who spared time from her busy schedule to share with us her deep insights on the Constitution of India. I am sure we all are enriched and benefited from her valuable influence. My sincere gratitude to Mr. Anand Priya and the school choir for the melodious rendition of the bear song and Hilary of Class 6C for bringing God's blessing upon us through her prayer. Let me be the first one to thank the blooming buds of our school who helped in conducting this virtual celebration of the Constitution Day. My heartfelt thanks and appreciation goes to Shreyas for his dynamic narration, Arpita Nair for highlighting the importance of the day, Farhan for the solemn pledge done very creatively and with enthusiasm. An event like this does not happen overnight. It requires meticulous planning and bird's eye view detail. I am extremely grateful to the team of dedicated teachers, Ms. Veena, the coordinator of this program, for her painstaking efforts in making this day a successful one. I thank Ms. Shashi for her expertise in presenting a wonderful presentation on Constituent Assembly, Ms. Rebecca for the voiceover, and Ms. Jennifer Bernard for the script. I also extend my heartfelt gratitude to Ms. Deepa, Ms. Suman, and Ms. Sajina for their timely guidance and support. Every show to become a successful one needs the hard-working hands of many people. Last but not the least, I would like to place on record all those who worked behind the scene to make this day a grand success. My sincere gratitude to Brother Mark for his painstaking efforts in editing the video and to Mr. Rajesh, our art sir, for the colorful quotes on Constitution Day. Let me conclude this day with a quote by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Constitution is not a mere lawyer's document. It is a vehicle of life and its spirit is always the spirit of age. With the same spirit, let's adhere to our constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Anandam.